Welcome to Nani Notes. Although this channel is really for the benefit of high school students in geometry, and here we're working on the circles chapter, this is something we can all enjoy. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to decode these numbers. Yes, those numbers that appear on the sidewall of your tires. In this example vehicle, the sport wagon, hey, that's my car. And over there, that's Nani in the back seat. We're going to explain so you can understand these numbers, not just look at them on a chart. First off, we're going to begin by explaining this relationship, and that is the diameter of the entire wheel with the distance traveled in a revolution. Let's have a closer look. We're just going to focus on that now. Well, let's start with this ancient concept. I'm going to take this diameter, and I'm going to roll this wheel exactly one revolution. And you see I can even illustrate it there by tracing that valve stem. And this is the distance that wheel is going to travel in one complete revolution. And you see that that's going to be equal to the circumference. Well, I really should say the circumference of the tire. The tire is making contact with the road and it's traveling that distance. Now, that probably looks really familiar to all of you in high school geometry. The, the circumference is the distance around the circle. Well, if I were to straighten it out, it looks like that. A lot longer than you'd think. So I know I've got the circumference there, and I say, well, let me, um, let me say, break this down this way. This distance is the diameter of the wheel. There's one diameter, there's two diameters, there's three and there's a wee bit more. Well, what that is, is of course the relationship that we know as pi. Now those of you in high school know this, and you have at least these first six digits memorized, because you know that on March 14th, you will be dismissed at 159. That's pi day. Hey, hey, that's pretty cool. Now, let's look at this formula. Circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. You Again, you knew that in high school math, but then you say, wait a minute, this is a radius for any circle. This is also a radius. Well, if two radii make a diameter, let's just simplify this formula into this. The circumference of any circle is pi d. Okay, now we've got something to work with. Let's look at the specifics for this actual tire. So, the tire diameter is important in finding the distance the wheel travels in one revolution. Strangely enough, it cannot be found directly. Well, uh, instead we need this tire size, combination of these three numbers, to determine the actual diameter of this tire. Look at this 205-55-16, typical Volkswagen. I'm going to take these three numbers one at a time. The 205, well that's going to be the width of the tire. I'm looking at the width of the tire and what kind of units, well, uh, metric. That, those are in millimeters. Not so odd until we look at the other two. The 55 is going to represent the tire's height. That's going to be going from the rim to the tip of the rubber. So this distance right here, now, this isn't in, well, it's not really in millimeters, it's in percent, or you could say an aspect ratio. This is 55% of the tire's width, which in this case is 205. Hmm, see how this works? And the wheel diameter, oh, God bless America. Finally, something that we know because it's in inches, uh, something we're all familiar with. So we've got these three numbers, and we're going to put those together to find this tire diameter. Now, just uh, to visualize, remember, if I were to, now let's move this over here, if I'm going to say that this is the wheel's diameter, then I can say, all right, the wheel's diameter plus the height of the tire once, the height of the tire twice is going to give me the diameter of the tire. Let's compare these three suggested tire sizes for 16, 17, and 18 inch wheels for your sport wagon. And we're going to need a conversion factor. 
Now, you most likely remember 2.54 centimeters to the inch or 25.4 millimeters to the inch. Well, let's look at these numbers. We'll go through this fast, then we'll pull out the calculator. All right, 205, all right? The tire height, well, let me see. Uh, that's 55% of 205. Um, the tire diameter, two times the tire height plus the wheel, and there you go. Uh, now, if I want the circumference, I'm going to multiply that by the number pi. There's a decimal approximation. Now, here's an interesting number. How many revolutions will it make in a mile? Eh, come up with almost 811. Okay, let's actually slow that down and use a calculator. So you've got your 205. That's that is the um, the width of your tire, and you said, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I've got a 55 profile right there. That's your 112 and three quarters. Now that's millimeters. Now if that's millimeters, and I'm saying okay, 25.4 millimeters to the inch, um, I am going to divide by 25.4. 25.4. Okay. Look at that. Uh, I'm just going to leave all the numbers in the register around at the end. Now, it um, looks just like the calculator on your cell phone, doesn't it? So, again, that's the tire height. That's the height, that's the height off the, um, from the rim to the rubber. So, let's multiply that times 2. And let's add the 16 for the wheel. See, now we're all in inches. And we've got a number here. We've got a number here roughly, um, well, just shy of 25, which represents the height in inches, which is the diameter of the tire. Now, the circumference, well, I'm going to take this number, multiply times pi, times pi, and you'll always have a pi key on your calculator. And there you go. That's the distance that this tire will travel in one full revolution. Now, uh, I know there's 5,280 feet in a mile. Well, hang on, let's, let's do this. Um, let's add this to the memory. Okay, so it's in the memory. And I'm gonna say, how many feet in a mile? 5,280 times 12. And that would be 12 inches per foot. 63,360 inches per mile. Not a number I'd memorize. And I'm going to divide that by this previously calculated number. And there you go. You've got 810, or roughly, yeah, roughly 8, 810.7. Honestly, significant figures, I'd probably go with 811. As far as revolutions that this tire is going to make to travel one mile. Now, again, we're assuming a lot of things like uh, tire pressure and um, not accounting for those factors. This is the theoretical uh, part of their calculations. So we've got that. Let's compare it uh, to some others. Okay, um, let's go a little bit faster here. Now, uh, let's say you've got the 17-inch wheels. Well, this is actually the one that came stock with mine. A little bit wider, 225 that's going to give us a little bit lower tire height. It's got a lower aspect ratio, 45%, and you can see just under, just about four inches. And let's see, I'm going to uh, take my tire diameter, I'm going to double that and add 17, and then I'll calculate the circumference, and this one works out to, well, um, almost 809 revolutions per mile. So you can see a little bit of a difference. Not a lot. Amazing how close they are. So let's go to this one. How about if you got the 18s? I think the, the new uh, I think the new golfs were, are making this available, but if you really like those low profile tires, let's work this out. Same width as the 17s. Calculate the tire height, and yikes, another half inch shorter. Um, you know, worry about the potholes up here in Alaska, but if you don't have them where you are, then maybe you like those 18-inch tires. My diameter, eh, 25, it's just a hair bigger, and 
And when I calculate the circumference, and then my revolutions per mile, the lowest number yet. So all three of these, pretty close. And um, we're going to do a, just a little bit of a comparison here so we can find a ratio. Well, ever considered changing the size of the wheels on your car and therefore the tires? Well, um, let's look at these exaggerated changes here and then we'll apply the math to our earlier example for the 16, 17, and 18 inch wheels on our Volkswagen. So here we go. Imagine you've got this wheel like this, just for comparison purposes. And um, okay, that one, well, compared to that one. Well, you see the bigger wheel takes less revolutions to travel a set distance. So what that might mean for us is, um, well, let's suppose we're switching from the small wheel, if this were the stock wheel in our car, and we switched to a larger wheel, it's going to result in fewer revolutions. It will underreport our speed and our mileage. Well, may not be a bad thing for your resale, but it uh, might be a little bit unnerving if, um, if your speedometer says uh, 30 and you're actually going 60. So this is in an exaggerated, so we can clearly see it. So again, the bigger, if the bigger wheel, it's going to underreport speed and mileage. Now, we should be able to compare this as well. How about if we switch from this wheel? We're going to go from the bigger one to the smaller one. Well, that is certainly going to generate far more revolutions. And all these revolutions, well, that's going to overreport our speed. It's going to overreport our mileage. Now, let's look at our wheel choices. We now know that changing our tire size can affect our speedometer and our odometer. So let's look at these three tire sizes and let's compare how they affect our speedometer and odometer. Now we had already worked out the circumference of these, um, well, these three different tires, pretty close. Now I've got it here in inches and this is you know, rounded to the nearest hundredth, but um, yeah, I'm going to back it up because, well, this is a math class. I'm going to, instead of looking at those numbers, let's look at these numbers. That is in terms of pi pi is constant, so I'm just going to use the ratio as the numbers highlighted in red. Huh. Well, that's pretty straightforward. Well, I'm going to say, and I want to compare saying that, all right, let's suppose stock is the 16. Now, honestly, again, I don't know that it's calibrated for the 16, but I would assume if this was the stock tire, your car is calibrated for the 16-inch tire. So now, if I want to know how much or what is the difference going to 17s? Well, consider this. We already established that if we switch from a smaller, 24.88 is smaller than 24.97, it's going to result in fewer revolutions, just a little bit, and it's going to underreport our speed and our mileage. All right, well, let's work that out. So I'm going to write out this ratio. Now, the 2488 is what your car thinks, what your car, um, the, what your car thinks a revolution is, or sorry, a um, circumference is, and the 2497 is the actual. So you see that we are looking at 96.6%. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's work these other ratios out here. 99.2% for the 18s. Now, what that means, um, well, let's just take this example. Let's suppose I'm traveling at 60 miles an hour. So that's a true 60. Then I'm going to take, well, where's that calculator of mine? Oh, there it is. See, I got the little four banger here. Um, let's do the little math here. 24.88 divided by 24.97. Now, that's again, that's my 99.6%. And I'm going to multiply that times... 60. And you can see, well, the reporting is pretty darn close. Um, I don't think anybody can read 0.8% or 0.8 mile per hour. Uh, if you can, you're, well, you're a better driver than me. But um, this is going to be underreported, and it's going to underreport 
just by a little tiny bit, 0.2 miles per hour. You know, honestly, negligible. That's why your manufacturer says this tire and this tire are interchangeable. Now, okay, the, that, there's other things that um, are involved in switching sizes. I don't want you to think you can calculate any number. You've got to clear the brake calipers and you've got to have adequate load for the vehicle. But that's for another topic. We're just doing the simple math here. So now let's take this side, 99.2. Um, and I'll take that percentage. And this car would be, well, switching from the 16s, if your car is calibrated for 16s, switching to 18s would represent a just slight underreporting, 59.5. Okay, um, let's switch it up just, and this will be the last thing we do. I'll let you get back to work. All right, let's suppose this is the stock. The 17s, now that's minus stock. I really don't know if they do this, if they have a different odometer for uh, the 17-inch the cars, but, well, they should. Um, and again, if switching to the 18s and switching to the 14s, you can see in this case, it's going to be a little bit different. If I was at a true 60 miles per hour, in this direction, I'm moving to a smaller wheel. In this direction, I'm moving to a larger wheel. And the result would be under-reporting on this for the 18s. And it'd be over-reporting at the, you know, over here with a smaller, uh, smaller tire. Um, you know, again, the summary, this shows that it's negligible. You know, these three sizes all work. They're all recommended for this car. But I see a lot of cars out there with some very big wheels. Oh, there's the bell. We must be done. So um, check it out and um, do the math. If you're going to put some crazy sizes on your car, um, you, know, you might be interested to know how this all works out. So have a great day, and thank you for watching Nani Notes.